Welcome to episode 54 of Success of the Malaysia Episode of the Joker and come back as one of your release cards. Today we'll be backpedaling and looking at a Wayland card from Kampala Ascendant, High Profile Target. This is a card that deals meat damage to the runner. This is a good thing because if you deal more damage than the runner has cards in their hand, you win. However, be careful, this only works if the runner has multiple tags. Let's see how to play this card. Right, so we are playing high profile target in a blue sun deck and we are just trying out building blocks and guess what, we immediately on our very first game get the godlike opening hand with building blocks into Chiyashi. That is a dream, anyone's dream, especially Blue Suns. Um, so yeah, we suddenly get this big chunky piece of ice on HQ, meaning that we are invulnerable to the likes of diversion of funds and embezzle, at least for the next couple of turns, as our opponent will have no way to um, economically break this Chiyashi. However, they install a Seika, which is pretty scary, <laughs> even off a of credit kiting, I should say. Uh, Seika can be very dangerous, and here I'm pondering whether I should replace the Chiashi on HQ, because they could potentially break it and derez it, they are rich enough to do so. So, uh, I have to decide between replacing the HQ Ice, uh, I have a choice between Chiyashi and Thetonium, both of which my opponent knows about. Now, both can be broken and derez with uh, Seika. The difference is, Thetonium can be res twice. Uh, after I play IPO to get up to 20 credits, whereas Chiyashi can only be res once. I chose the Chiyashi here because I love big ice, but more importantly, what I love even more are the big number of tags my opponent is floating. They floated three tags, they have five cards in hand, boom, they're dead. Uh, I mean, high profile target, they're dead. What can I say? This card is basically a bigger, better, boom. What I absolutely love about High Profile Target is that right now, Lisa Talking Thunder, the Tag Me Criminal, seems to be the thing in fashion. And nothing feels better than putting the smack in the face and letting them know that there is this good card on the corp side that they better watch out for. A lot of them just don't have answers to High Profile Target, those cocky, arrogant people. Well, they deserve it. And that's why you should play High Profile Target. You know, just splash one off in every one of your deck, whether it's Waylon or not, whether there's kill or not, because, you know, tilt them, make them mad. They ask for it. Thanks for watching and happy net running. See you next time. Yeehaw! Welcome to episode 54 of Successful Demo! Again! <laughs> now we are back in Rain and Reverie Town and we are going to look at the Wayland cards. Um, in general, I think you can see that the main theme of the Wayland cards in uh, Rain and Reverie uh, revolves around uh, bad publicity and rewarding the corp for taking bad publicity. However, um, I think of the seven main factions, uh, Wayland had has had the most diverse cards in the sense that you know only half of the cards uh, re are really related to bad publicity the rest all branch out in different directions and in particularly oh what am i saying in particular i think uh you can see that some of the cards are kind of designed for blue sun yes i am looking at you building blocks this card is well it screams blue sun if anything it's basically the uh, replacement, post-rotation replacement of Oversight AI. Let's do a quick compare and contrast between the two. Building Blocks is a lot more expensive than Oversight AI and it's barriers only. So with those two restrictions, you might think that it's not worth playing. However, there are some subtle benefits to running Building Blocks. Uh, building Blocks uh, requires one less click because you are installing and uh, playing the Building Blocks at the same time. Uh, so you are spending one click instead of two. It's, and more importantly, it's not neutered by all the subroutines being broken. Uh, that was one of the biggest downsides of Oversight AI back in the day. When you play Oversight AI in Blue Sun, you typically could only reliably get uh, your investment off Oversight AI if you played it within the first couple of turns. Because once the runner sets up, they will challenge your Oversight 
oversighted eyes every time uh, you, you, you choose to play it. And that means you're not only going to lose the money that you might gain from raising your eyes uh, and then bouncing it back with Blue Sun, you are also going to lose that eyes itself, which, is, which are uh, very big losses. Uh, it's important to note, however, that building blocks does not work on already installed ice. The ice has to be in your HQ and it has to be a barrier. So, uh, which barriers allow you to gain money with building blocks? Since it costs 5 and for a respectable payout, we want it to pay out at least as much as a hedge fund. So we are looking at ice that cost at least 9 credits or more, uh, have a rest cost of 9 credits or more. Turns out there's quite a few of them. Unfortunately, a lot of them are not really playable or not really good in Blue Sun for one reason or another. Ashgaru and Heimdall, for example, are way too expensive, and Hadron's Wall and Asteroid Belt suffer from the typical Wayland barrier problem, that they just end the run. They don't have any spiky subroutines, so uh, putting them on your centrals isn't really going to guard you, because your opponent's just going to farm turning wheel counters all day, every day. I'm not even going to include Bulwark on this list, because obviously, if you are playing... Uh, big eyes that cost a lot to break, but you are giving the runner back publicity, you are definitely doing something wrong. With all those not so good eyes out of the picture, it seems like we are down to not that many, we don't really have a lot of choices. Orion, which is pretty nice, um, it's the biggest ice you can res, and I didn't think of it at first, turns out it is a barrier in addition to being a code gate and a sentry, but uh, it being unique really really hurts because you don't want to be packing three copies of it in your deck. Following that, the next best ice you can get is unfortunately unfortunately one that is out of faction in Chiashi. And then you have Tetonium, which only pays out as much as a hedge fund, and is pretty cheap to break with paperclip. So yeah, not really the best ice uh, card pool to go with right now in terms of synergy with building blocks. You really wish we had Curtain Wall, but too bad that's gone. So we have to make do with what we have. For those of you who weren't around when Blue Sun was a thing, uh, basically what happens with uh, building blocks and what used to happen with Oversight AI is that you would res a big piece of ice and then the next turn you use Blue Sun's ability to return it to HQ, uh, gaining uh, the number of credits in the re rest cost in the rest cost of the ice that you just bounced back. So basically building blocks is very much essentially an economy card. Unlike Oversight AI, however, it must be noted that Building Blocks is not restricted to Blue Sun. You can actually play this in any, uh, yeah, any Corp deck for that matter. As long as you're running Big Barrier Ice, you can justify running Building Blocks. However, you need an extra condition, and that is that you must have another way to res these Big Ice outside of Building Blocks. You can't reliably draw Building Blocks every game, so... Um, yeah, you better have some other way to make big money in order to res your Chiashis and Orions. Uh, you could attempt to splash this into Jinteki Faction to res Chiashis, but keep in mind it's 4 influence a pop. I think that's a bit too expensive. Uh, we also note that it has a play cost of 5, and that means that it is within range of a turn 1 play. Unlike cards like IPO, which cost 8 credits, um, yeah, building blocks can be played on turn 1, and... That is probably one of the best times to play it because, uh, you know, it gives you good a uh, good amount of burst economy. It's basically like a four fifth and six copy of hedge fund, assuming you're playing three copies of it. Uh, unfortunately, it does delay. It is the payout is delayed in the sense that uh, you need to wait one turn before you can trigger Blue Sun to bounce your uh, building blocks back into hand. Oh, sorry, building blocked ice into hand. Uh, so yeah, in the meantime, you could be vulnerable because your 5 credit down payment for building blocks has been sunk and now you're much poorer than you started the turn. Uh, so yeah, that's building blocks for you and the deck that we're going to play, if you haven't seen enough of it uh, by, uh, just now, here it is. Uh, again, this deck looks very familiar to the previous Lady Liberty failure episode. Um... Partially because I want to make up for it, but also because uh, at the end of the day, it turns out that uh, Surveyor is still one of the best uh, ice to play in a Glacier deck. And we are obviously playing a Glacier deck because we're running big ice like Shiashi and Tetoniums. Uh, and, it, uh, and the other thing is, as it turns out, the best uh, way to use all the excess money gained from playing building blocks is to just simply land a hard-hitting news and hit them with a high-profile target. 
uh, pretty similar to the hard hitting news boom combo we had in the Asmari deck that we saw last episode. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be frank, uh, as much as you do, I also want to play a pure Glacier Blue Sun deck, one that just attempts to score off a remote with very powerful defensive upgrades, but unfortunately, of all the cards not to make a return, of all the cards not to get a replacement in Rain and Reverie, Caprice had to be one of them. We did not get any defensive upgrade that even comes close to rivaling Caprice Nisei's awesomeness, and as a result, uh, we are not going to be able to build a pure Glacier deck. We need to find some other way to punish the runner with our excess cash and hard hitting news is still the most reliable solution. If you don't believe me, you are about to watch it in action. I have absolutely no idea what to expect from my opponent, so I'm just gonna whack it and play some good net runner. I'm gonna keep my opening hand because there's some pretty darn good cards in it. I mean, Angel Friend and Rashida, I'm not gonna say no to that. So, uh, we immediately face our first choice uh, when we have to decide which ice we want to protect our Rashida with, our turn 1 Rashida. Uh, I went with Surveyor here because we are up against a runner with zero link, so a Surveyor would cost 4 credits for them to pass through. And normally, you wouldn't res a surveyor for, on, uh, for only uh, for 5 credits on turn 1, right? You would go bankrupt. But because you're blue sun, you can afford to res it and then bounce it back into hand if they spend too much money pumping into the trace. Who knows, you might learn a hard hitting news. So my opponent did a very smart move on click 1 by running my HQ. Uh, I didn't get to talk about that a lot, but it was very dangerous. They could have gotten my NGO front, they could have gotten my Oak Town. I was very lucky that they hit the Economic Warfare instead because, um, you know, if they hit the NGO front, I wouldn't be able to do this here. Uh, get some money off NGO front and then threaten them by resing both Surveyors. Right? I'm down to one credit, but I can res the second Surveyor by resing NGO front here and then make their life a living hell by landing a hard hitting news as follow up. So that's the awesome thing about Blue Sun, you can recoup your uh, investment into ice by bouncing back into the, into your hand as such. Now my opponent ended the turn on 4 credits by installing a patchwork and I'm going to make them pay for it. Click 1 is advance the NGO front so that I'm up, up to a healthy credit level. Click 2 I attempt to play economic warfare before realizing that in order to play it you need the runner to have made a successful run, which they did not. They jacked out after the first surveyor, so I can't do that. Instead, we're going to play building blocks for money. We are going to uh, construct a Tethonium on R&D so that they don't freely run R&D, and then the hard-hitting news. Uh, if they don't clear the tags, they'll be dead as soon as I draw a high-profile target. Of course, they have to clear the tags, um, because if I do have a high-profile target in hand, they don't have enough cards to survive it. So. Uh, they obediently clear the tags and I make a misplay here. I should have trashed the daily cast on 6. I completely didn't notice that. That was an utter misplay. I was too tunnel vision into getting an Atlas counter. That's why it is. I basically told myself I needed the Atlas counter, so I'm going to install, install, advance. But uh, crippling my, denying my opponent of 6 credits would have been a much better play there. So uh, yeah, they just clear the tags and drop another daily cast. Without running, they are not in danger of another hard hitting news. Not like I have a second one in hand. But what I do have are 2 economic warfares and this could get really ugly for my opponent. In the meantime, I'll just over advance my atlas which means I now do have access to my second hard hitting news, if need be. If my opponent overextends once again, they are going to get punished and if they underextend, I'm going to score this Oak Town from my hand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's the typical conundrum you set with Waylon. Either they run and get tagged or they don't run and you score 7 points and win. This deck is very good at scoring 7 points. The agenda suite is 3 Atlas, 3 Oak Town, 3 Global Food. So it's no surprise that I've seen one of each agenda uh, so far. Uh, again, I got very lucky in the opening uh, where my opponent ran HQ. They really had a good shot of getting my Oak Town, but they missed it. Instead, they're going to deep data mine, which, oh my gosh, I didn't see that one come in. Uh, that's a very scary R&D pressure card to face against. So, they deep data mine me, and now I have to make a decision. I could score the Oak Town here, or I could go for double Echo Warfare into hard-hitting news. Very interesting decision. Uh, double Echo Warfare into hard hitting news would certainly be a tempo killer for my opponent. Again, they'll be forced to clear tags and uh, landing the hard hitting news wouldn't be too difficult. So I went with that plan. The only problem is by 
using the Atlas counter here, I'm shuffling R&D. Don't forget, they just did a deep data mining run. So if they have a second deep data mining accessible somewhere, they could kill Mary on R&D for another deep data mining. Thankfully, it seems like they don't. So I'm in the clear, which means I can re-ice R&D and continue uh, advancing my Oak Town. Because they showed commitment to clearing the tags after the second hard hitting news, uh, they don't have any credits remaining to challenge my remote. The double surveyor remote is good. I'm too rich. I can easily outtrace my opponent on the end of runs. So I'm not worried about Oak Town being stolen at all. Um, I can safely leave it at three advancements. And then, oh my gosh, I draw my third Echo Warfare. This is just really brutal for my opponent. Uh, I, I just played the Echo Warfare for value there since they made a successful run with Dirty Laundry, essentially negating the credit gain from Dirty Laundry. And then I score the Oak Town, so that puts me up 4 points to 2, up 14 credits to 2. I think I'm winning this game. I even have the winning agenda in hand. They can't do much about it. In fact, I'm in such a good position that I don't even have to let on let them on to the fact that this is the winning agenda. I simply single advanced it because I know I have audacity in hand and am more than able uh, to put 4 advancements on the global food next turn to win. My opponent had no chance of setting up at all. They spent 2 entire turns and half their bank uh, beating the 2 hard hitting news tracers that I landed on them. I had too much, too good of an early start. Playing 3 copies of economic warfare and 2 copies of hard hitting news in the first 10 turns of the game just feels so dirty. While that felt more like a successful demo of economic warfare into hard hitting news more than anything else, uh, we still managed to play building blocks this game. And I must say, the fact that it cost one click instead of two actually came into play. If you rewind back to the turn where I played building blocks, that was the turn where I landed the first hard hitting news on my opponent. My turn went like this. I advanced the NGO and popped it for eight credits, which gave me a lot of money. More than enough to actually land a hard hitting news. I had enough excess money to actually play a building blocks from my hand as well. And that's exactly what I did. This wouldn't have been possible if I were playing Oversight AI because I wouldn't have the titonium in my hand installed on the table yet. I would have to oversight something else on the table. And at that point, I only had surveyors and something irrelevant on HQ, the formicary. So yeah, I would not have been able to exe execute that turn with oversight AI, but with building blocks, I was able to accomplish so much in one turn. I gained money from NGO friend, I forced my opponent to lose tempo with hard hitting news, and I set up my economy for next turn as well. By playing the building blocks, I guaranteed that next turn I would get an influx of 9 credits by bouncing back the Tithonium, and then it's back to business as usual. So, I won this game purely off tempo. Right? My opponent had way too few clicks to play the game. They didn't even get to install a single icebreaker, simply because they were spending all their turns clicking to clear tags. Meanwhile, I was compressing all my work in very few clicks. I never once had to click for credits because I was gaining money so efficiently by advancing NGO friends, by advancing Oak Town renovations, things that I'm doing anyway, right? I'm getting, gaining agenda points anyway uh, while uh, advancing the Oak Town. And of course, by playing cards like building blocks, hedge funds, and IPOs, I'm gaining so much value, so much money in the span of a single click. Uh, with my sheer efficiency, my opponent just couldn't keep up with me. Right, so uh, that's building blocks for you. But I think one thing that building blocks really uh, does is that it props up Blue Sun, which I think is my favorite part about this card. Uh, it's part of something bigger. The fact that Blue Sun is a very fun ID to play is the reason why I really enjoy uh, running building blocks. I'm so happy that uh, Blue Sun got what it deserved, a nice oversight AI replacement. Everyone thought that Blue Sun was dead after rotation and they were right. Well, kind of. I mean, sure, a lot of new Wayland IDs have taken the limelight, as we saw from Euros. Uh, Titan Transnational, Argus Security, and Scorpio's Defense Systems all are very competitively viable IDs. But guess what? A Blue Sun made top 16 as well, and Blue Sun just got more support. I love that there's so many viable Wayland IDs out there, competitively viable at that, and you can just play the style of Wayland you like the best. Isn't that refreshing? Um, I, and uh, the synergy with Blue Sun doesn't just stop at building blocks. If you take a closer look at um, the entire Rain and Reverie big box, there are more cards in there that prop up Blue Sun that much more. I didn't get to showcase all of them, 
I think you got a little hint. Uh, there's a certain ice I put on HQ that I didn't get to showcase. But yes, uh, there are cards out, other cards out there that synergize with Blue Sun. And I'll leave it to you, all you wonderful viewers, uh, to tinker around with it. And maybe share your experiences with playing Blue Sun in the New Rain and Reverie meta. Because I think it's a really fun ID and lends to a lot of interesting decisions. That being said, there's still one big pro problem. The biggest, biggest thing plaguing Blue Sun is not removed from the meta just yet. That's right, it's Employee Strike. Probably the biggest counter to Blue Sun and by extension Building Blocks. If you're playing Building Blocks for a turn 1 economy and you're looking to bounce that Chiyashi to gain 12 credits after turn 1, uh, turn 1 Employee Strike just utterly wrecks you. You'll be stuck with very few credits in your credit pool. You'll be clicking for credits for the next few turns as you're under employee strike. That is not where you want to be. This card is a big nightmare, especially for Blue Sun with building blocks, because you basically invested 5 credits into an operation that doesn't pay off. Sure, you have a nice rest shashi somewhere on your central, but that's it. So that's a very, very big problem with uh, Blue Sun building blocks. And one to keep in mind if you suspect you're up against Employee Strike, you have to be careful or pack a counter current of your own. Another problem that uh, you will find with blue building blocks is that it dies pretty hard to knifed. Now, knifed is not usually a strong card against Blue Sun because you can simply bounce your barrier back and reinstall it unres so that they can't. Uh, easily knife it. However, if you are leaving your eyes exposed with building blocks, you are begging to be knifed if your opponent is Anarch and they're running Paperclip or Yusuf. It's a very easy way to just destroy your investment. So be wary of that. Knife can certainly uh, make you very miserable as you see your um, 5 credit investment go down the drain just like that. Now, Moving on to the combos and non-bows. I know you're sick and tired and you pr of this card and you probably hate it with all passion, but it bears saying. Surveyor is actually, outside. I mean, outside of obviously the big barriers, the next best combo with building blocks is actually Surveyor. Um, the thing about Surveyor is that not only does it synergize with the fact that we are running a kill combo in our deck, right? High, uh, high profile target uh, works off the two tags that Surveyor's first subroutine gives you, but it also works off building blocks. Imagine you're in the mid to late game. You have, say, a three, uh, 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 a remote with uh, three ice on it, uh, one of which is Surveyor, so the Surveyor's at six strength. That seems pretty good. If you're trying to buff up that remote, it's pretty expensive to manually install an ice. Don't forget, we're not running Ginger Grid. So manually installing a new piece of ice on the remote is going to set you back a click and three credits. Whereas if you play building blocks and you build a new barrier on your ice remote, not only are you cheating in uh, that barrier for free, meaning that your surveyor increases by two strength without paying a single cent, more importantly, you're getting that barrier rest. So that big barrier is going to add so much more tax to your server. For a single click, you can do so much. You boost your surveyor while you boost your server's overall defense as well by adding a chunky barrier to the mix. So building blocks really helps in charging up your remote surveyors. And uh, while we didn't get to showcase that this game, this was an interaction I was looking at and would have considered if I made it into the mid to late game. An important normal to note that even though is that even though Building Blocks is a Wayland economy card uh, at its core, it is not a transaction. So your typical transaction-based cards do not work off it. Building a better world does not gain you an extra credit from playing Building Blocks. Brian Stinson cannot recur it from the heap, which is a bummer. Sorry, recur it from the archives. And Blockchain, the new uh, Rain and Reverie Ice uh, in Wayland Faction, does not gain extra subroutines from building blocks. It's a pity, but that's how it is. Right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, <laughs> double gameplay episode as much as I have, even though the game... Uh, the gameplay was fairly one-sided. Um, I think it uh, adequately showcases the power of both high-profile target and building blocks when played at opportune times. Gotta wreck those neezers, man. <laughs> Seriously. They, they, are, they, are over uh, they are overstaying their welcome. It's time to show them the way through the door. And by that, I mean... Boom. Thanks for watching and happy night running. Goodbye.